Namova. Today, as some of you would have uh, seen on Twitter, I tweeted about some claims made by the prominent historian Irfan Habib in uh, an interview with Al Jazeera, uh, the well-known uh, neutral news channel. So, uh, I, when I read the title of the news report, I, I, <laughs> I was laughing. Uh, the the title had me so it it said the word hindu is arabic why don't you why why don't they throw it out probably they had they meant it as a clickbait but when i said it was uh, irfan habib saying this i i, I really laughed out loud uh, it is such a basic mistake irfan habib is known to make such mistakes uh, earlier in an interview or in a statement he had, he had claimed that the surname shah of the home minister of india uh, comes from persian it actually does not the the surname Shah Sah Sahu, uh, used by the trader communities in India. Uh, these surnames they come from the Sanskrit word Sadhu, which becomes Sahu or Sah in Prakrit, and from there Shah. Uh, so that was then, and today in an interview with uh, Al Jazeera, uh, Irfan Habib has claimed that the word Hindu is Arabic. It is not. The word Hindu is not Arabic. Uh, it is uh, the first attest attested use of this word is in an old Persian source, uh, the uh, Achaemenid Empire inscriptions, and it is cognate with the Sanskrit word Sindhu. It is not an Arabic word, so to get such a basic word, the origin of such a basic word uh, wrong is is surprising. It's 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 actually shocking, and coming from um, from a well-known historian. Uh, the etymology of such an important word, uh, if he gets it wrong and, uh, and confuses between Persian and Arabic, it is, uh, it is surprising, it is surprising to say the least. And uh, questions are to be raised to Al, 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 Al Jazeera also, uh, if, uh, if they really have any checks and balances or do they publish whatever uh, they receive without any proofreading. So in this interview, uh, he has made not only this uh, wild claim, but several other wild claims. Uh, I recommend everybody to read the interview. I'll put a link in the video description. Uh, so when he's asked uh, about why is the BJP removing Mughal and other Muslim rulers from school textbooks, and then uh, he claims that uh, uh, they're trying to communalize Indian history, which is expected from Irfan Habib. Then when Al Jazeera asks him, can you talk about the recent changes in school textbooks in India? Uh, he mentions a couple. Uh, he, he, he says that the, the ancient Indian history syllabus recommended by the UGC, uh, in that syllabus, the caste system is omitted from history. Uh, this is a bit surprising. It should not be omitted from history. Whether you call it Jati or Varn or caste, uh, there has been a system uh, in this country. Uh, the Buddhist text, the Jain text, the Hindu text, there's enough evidence. So if this is true, then definitely not, shouldn't be done. So we'll grant this point to Irfan Habib. And then he says, uh, uh, historians must prove by establishing facts. They can't manufacture facts. You can't create an Aryan race. These are words of Irfan Habib. And this is an insult to Sanskrit because actually in earlier Sanskrit text, Arya is an area in Iran. I repeat, he says... Arya in an, is an area in Iran. Iran is plural of Arya. Actually, Iran means the land of Aryans. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, Professor Irfan Habib, where, where are you going? Arya in earlier Sanskrit texts is an area in Iran. And I never knew about it. There is no dictionary that mentions it. There is no text that I am aware of. I have the Apte dictionary and I, I in fact checked all the major Sanskrit dictionaries available. And there is no citation at all where the word Arya in an earlier Sanskrit source refers to an area in Iran. No, it does not. So, uh, in fact, yes, the, the Vedic texts do mention Arya and uh, Dasyus and Dasas, but they are meant, the, the words are used for people, not for an area in Iran. So, I don't know where he's getting his facts from. Uh, the next question is interesting. So when Al Jazeera, Al Jazeera asks him, can you talk about the Indian knowledge system and how it is being now framed by the Hindu far right? Uh, Habib says, uh, historical sources are such that they can have a Hindu communal interpretation, Muslim communal interpretation, and you can have a Marxist interpretation. So there is no neutral interpretation possible. 
uh, there's no balanced interpretation possible as per Irfan Habib, but uh, the interpretation can be either Hindu communal, Muslim communal, or Marxist. So essentially what Irfan Habib is saying is, if you don't agree with me, you are either Hindu communal or Muslim communal, but you're not secular or Marxist like me. Is that what he's implying? I'm not sure. Uh, but it, it's, uh, that's what it sounds like. Uh, he, um, then he talks about, he, he does make some sense, and uh, in between he does... Uh, as uh, somebody, as an English poet said, deviates into sense or does he deviate from sense or deviates into sense? We don't know. But he says that uh, uh, BJP's uh, ideological mentor published an article saying that Man Singh built the Taj Mahal uh, and then historian Ramesh Chandra Majumdar wrote to them, I won't read your paper now and you're not entitled to publish any of my articles. If this is true, then uh, yes, uh, I agree. This kind of uh, wild theories without any claims, conspiracy theories like Taj Mahal was built by Man Singh or it was originally a Shiva temple, I don't agree with them and they should not be propagated. So point given to Irfan Habib. Now um, he talks about uh, Maulana Azad, the Tipu Sultan and so on. Uh, uh, so Irfan Habib does say that uh, the suppression of the Malabar rebellion by Tipu cannot be justified but that could be said of almost any ruler at that time. So this is kind of... Uh, uh, a balancing act. You you say, you grant that, yes, there were some excesses, but everybody did it, so it's fine. I don't think everybody did it, but that's his view. So we can't argue with views. We can we can contradict uh, stupid statements and facts, but if, it's, if that's his view, then that's okay. Uh, names of cities and roads with Muslim names are being erased. So uh, he, he says that, uh, he, he makes an interesting point. He says Aurangabad's original name was Khidki and it was again founded by Muslim Malik Ambar and, and an African. So Malik Ambar is an outsider, uh, hence he can't be named. You can't call it Ambar Nagar, which you should if you're interested in history or you should call it Khidki. But Sambhaji Nagar makes no sense because Sambhaji never went to Aurangabad. Uh, wow, I mean there's Allahabad and there's no evidence that somebody ever went to Prayag. There is uh, Dr. Ambedkar Nagar. There are so many Ambedkar societies and there is no evidence that Dr. Ambedkar went to each of these places. So, uh, well, uh, you, can, you can name cities and uh, places in honor of people who haven't visited those places. There's no such rule. Uh, then he says, um, oh, the question is about why the BJP wants to rewrite history. And Irfan Habib claims that their aim was to demonize Muslims, including the Mughals. Uh, and then he says, the word Hindu is Arabic. Why don't this, they first throw it out? So again, like the origin of the word, of the last name Shah, Irfan Habib is mistaken. Uh, although he later he does make some valid points. He says, there's, uh, in fact, there is no use of the word Hindu in Sanskrit literature until the 14th or 15th century. Maybe off by a few hundred years, but yes, granted, there's no use of the word Hindu in Sanskrit texts until the medieval times, which is where he's correct, but the origin he's completely messed it up. Um, and then, uh, yeah, then he says Rig Veda. Okay, so he makes a claim that they are, uh, they are applying fantasies like India being the mother of democracy. No historian has admitted that India was the mother of democracy. Rig Veda talks about Rajas, which means tribal chief. Tribal chief? Uh, well, if if uh, the Rig Vedic people are, tri are tribals and the Rajas are tribal chiefs, then what's wrong in saying Mughals were invaders? Uh, they are Rig Vedic people and the people, the Vedic people had a king and that's what Raja means. Raja means a ruler. It doesn't mean a tribal chief. Well, if it means a tribal chief, then, well, uh, we'll say Mughals were invaders. <laughs> uh, so this kind of, well, this, this interpretation sounds like a communal interpretation to me, but I'll leave that to you. Uh, then he says, uh, show me a serious historian who, in ancient India who said so. Yes. Uh, I don't know if any serious historians have claimed that India was the mother of democracy, but there are some serious historians who have claimed, who have written with, uh, with evidence that certain democratic elements were present in the Vedic people. Uh, so one example is this book, which I have open on my screen right now. I can't show this uh, because I don't have time to edit this video today, uh, but the book is, is uh, titled Aspects of Political Ideas and Institutions in Ancient India and it is by Ram Sharan Sharma who is a Marxist historian uh, like Irfan Habib and on uh, page 109 of this book he writes 
Both the earlier and the later references testify to the royal presence in the Sabha, although some passages hint at the king's election by the Samiti. We have no such references to his election by the Sabha. So, uh, Ramcharan Sharma says that there are Vedic passages which hint to or allude to the election of a king by a Samiti. And this is uh, uh, another paper on this is by Jankinath Bhatt in Ancient Indian Democracies published in, by the Institut de Sociologie de la Université de Bruxelles, so the Institute of, Soci Institute of Sociologi Sociology, University of Brussels. Uh, and there Jankinath Bhatt writes that uh, it is now more or less unanimously agreed, this is a peer-reviewed source, it is now more or less unanimously agreed that the Samiti, among other things, had the following functions, election of the king, re-election of a king who had been banished, and discussion of the state matters. The king attended the Samati. It was thought necessary that he should do so. The Rig Veda has like a true king going to the Samiti. So there are historians, there are Marxist historians who have said that the Vedic texts mention or hint towards the election of a king by a Samiti. Therefore, one has to agree that there have been certain democratic uh, practices mentioned in the Vedic texts and to say that there is nothing there's no relationship. Well, maybe mother of democracy, maybe not, but there are certain democratic uh, practices that are, that are mentioned indeed in the Vedic uh, texts. Another blooper. So, uh, Irfan Habib says the Sanskrit name for that period is Mahajanapada, which doesn't mean democratic republic. It means tribes. Tribes? Mahajanapada means tribes? No, it does not, <laughs> Professor Irfan Habib. Uh, you may be a good scholar of medieval history, you may be a good scholar of uh, Persian, Arabic, Urdu, Hindi sources or English sources, but not of Sanskrit sources. So please don't make these wild claims. Mahajanapada means a great region inhabited by people. Jana means people. Pada means a place. Padam vyavasititrana sthana lakshmangri So says the Amarakosha. One of the meanings of Pada is a sthana or a place. So, Janapada means a place inhabited by people. Jana, people. Pada, place. So, Janapada means a place or a region. And Mahajanapada is a great region or a great place or inhabited by people. In other words, a, a, a large uh, kingdom or a large area governed by a single ruler and so on. So, a great state, a great region, a large region. That's what Mahajanapada means. It does not mean tribes. It does not. So, uh, anyway, so then he says, no serious historian that I have read, communal or otherwise, ever claimed that there was democracy in ancient India. Well, we just cited Ram Sharan Sharma's textbook, uh, Aspects of uh, Political Ideas and Institutions in Ancient India, which on page 109 says it, uh, that the king was elected by the Samiti. And we have Janaki Nath, uh, but, so there are two, two examples I found. Uh, then he says, uh, uh, okay, this, there's another claim about uh, Holmes. So, uh, when Irfan Habib is asked about the BJP says historical wrongs are being set right. So then he compares uh, Holmes with Mughals. Irfan Habib says, uh, they forget that Ahom uh, language is Thai language and their descendants have started calling themselves Thai Ahoms. Uh, T-H-A-I, that's how the article spells it. I don't know what Irfan Habib said, but that's what Al Jazeera published. No, it's not Thai Thai, it's Thai Thai. And Thai is one of the languages in the Thai family. So it's not a home Thai, it's 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 not Thai a homes, it's Thai a homes, T A I a homes. Uh, today they are both Hindus and Muslims. They were obviously Thai. Uh, they were not Thai, so uh, the first a home ruler came from what is today China, uh, not Thailand. Uh, they were not Hindu. But they, over time, they became Hinduized, and if you see the later king names of the names of the later Ahom kings, they had a Chinese origin name and or not a Chinese origin name, but a Thai or Thai Ahom origin name, and also a Sanskrit origin name. Uh, so once again, it's not Thai T H A I, but Thai T I. Uh, it may be a typo. It may be a mistake from Al Jazeera's side, but just to set the record straight. Uh, again, he then he compares Aryan businesses just like Nazis. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> uh, 
compare if if you well there's a there's a there's a law in fact uh, I forget the name but there's a law that in an in an online debate the longer a debate goes the the greater the chance that somebody is compared to a Nazi and to me if you compare anybody to Nazis you have seeded the argument you've lost the argument uh, and then uh, uh, yeah more more uh, RSS Nazi stuff and uh, uh, Hindu right wing Al Jazeera asked him. Hindu right wing says there was there was there was a mass conversion of Hindus under the Mughals and other Muslim rulers, um, and so Habib is as expected. He says uh, uh, when Hajjaj ibn Yusuf sent Muhammad mid Qasim to send, he asked them to be tolerant, and he said in fact the Multan temple was destroyed by the heretics. Qasim did not destroy any temple, so. Who were these heretics? Uh, who were these heretics? What uh, <laughs> were they atheists? Uh, what faith did they profess? That Hirpan Habib does not say. And not just uh, the Multan temple. There's so many temples. There's uh, the Alamgir mosque built right on top of where the Kashi Vishwanath Mandir once stood. Uh, and there's no need of evidence. It's all there in the back. Uh, the back side of the mosque has a part wall which uh, has uh, the older temple and there's so many other temples so anyway and then uh, uh, well he, he does make some valid points the first finance minister of Aurangzeb was a Hindu his greatest officer viceroy was a Raja Jai Singh of the Deccan yes the, the, there were some Hindu officers there were quite a few Hindu officers in the Mughal uh, rule but overwhelming majority were Muslims uh, in an area where the overwhelming majority were, were Hindus uh, so that is also true, which Irfan Habib does not uh, mention. So yeah, that was it. Uh, mostly Irfan Habib missing things like Arya, Hindu, Janapada, Maha Janapada. And even he says, when he says uh, uh, there's no race Arya. Uh, so what he says is uh, you can't create an Aryan race. And then now you make Aryans into a race. Uh, Arya means a very respectable noble person. It doesn't mean the race. Uh, so friends, uh, I'm sorry. I have to tell you what the, what the truth is. The word Arya is used in both senses. It is used in the sense of an honorable, respectable person. And is also used in the sense of an ethnic group. This is attested by many dictionaries. Uh, in fact, the Shabda Kalpadruma clearly says that one of the meanings of the word Arya is Mlechetara Jati. A Jati, you call it a race, you call it people, you call it an ethnicity different from the Mlechas. And this you see in uh, Jain sources, this you see in uh, Hindu sources, this you see in Buddhist sources. So uh, yes, the Arya is used for a noble and honorable person, but the word Arya in Sanskrit is also used for a people, for race and you can look at different dictionaries yes the true meaning depends on the context for example in the Mahabharata uh, Kunti says it is the it is a character which makes somebody Arya however in contrast to say the Dasyus or the Dasas or the Mlechas the word when the word Arya is mentioned it does refer to a Jati or a people or a race if you call it so uh, that's all for today uh, on Arya, on Hindu, on Mahajanapada. That was funny. Mahajanapada uh, means tribes. No, Mahajanapada means a great region of people. Uh, but uh, I think I think uh, Irfan Habib uh, is a good scholar of Persian Arabic sources of medieval history. But when he ex uh, ventures into uncharted territory, things he has no idea about, and he makes such statements, it is it is funny. Uh, and not expected from an academic. Academics are expected to read up and uh, make claims which are backed by evidence and not just throw in uh, etymologies or words or origins uh, just out of nowhere. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this session. Uh, not editing this video, not uh, putting all the fancy images uh, for the references uh, for lack of time. I'll see you in some other video on some other topic. Namo.